So over the last couple of weeks, we have received an influx of emails in regards to newly licensed drivers wanting to become owner operators. The reason these people are coming to me or I'm stumbling upon these people is because we right now posted our 2018 Cascadias for sale. So a lot of buyers are coming in here and when they come to negotiate the price or they want to strike a deal, then I sit and I talk to them and I pick their brain about them becoming owner operators. Now I've stumbled upon a few of them that are trying to purchase the truck with without having any experience working as class one drivers. So I was able to convince one of the guys that wanted to buy the truck to come in. I was able to pick his brain on videos. You might just be setting yourself up for failure. So I really wanna share this experience with you guys. There's a lot that you can learn from it. So check out this interaction that I had with a driver that came to the office to purchase one of those trucks. So let's get to it. You're thinking of purchasing a truck? Yes. And um, how long have you been trucking? Uh, not long. I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess what they call a new driver. I got my license a few months ago, back in April. So I've been kind of looking at both company driver positions and operator positions. I realized that the operator position is not typically something that you go straight into. So since April until now, have you been working as a company driver somewhere? No. 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 So you want to just buy a truck right from the get go without any experience at working solo or even in a team? Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's definitely an option that I'm looking at. And it wasn't an option that I thought I, I would have, but it seems like that it is out there. Although it, it, I hear it's rare. Um, it's just, extremely rare. I don't know who in the, in the right mind would hire somebody. Right, right. I mean, the insurance alone. It, Right. right. Just to, to ensure you, I don't, know um, how they, I don't even know how they're getting away with it or doing it. Right. Well, what I've been told is that it's, I guess the truck will be plated not in Ontario, so in another province, and there's different types of insurance, so wow. that's how they... And this they is a reputable, com Canadian reputable company? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Why haven't you worked just to see if you like it or if you can be on the road for X amount of days? I mean, long haul trucking in Canada yeah. usually requires, I don't know, 10, 15 days you're on the road at a time. How do you know you're going to be able to handle it or you're, you're built for something like that? Right. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I'm kind of just going off of gut. You know, I have thought about that. I've always liked to drive, always liked, you know, road trips and stuff like that. I know this is a different beast altogether. Like, to be honest with you, I've kind of the whole the last few months just putting feelers out there. I did was looking for company positions, and now I'm also looking at an operator position. I'm not saying that's 100% what I'm going to do, yeah. but I'm at the stage where I'm, I'm definitely thinking. thinking about it. So you want my my opinion, my personal opinion, and sure, yeah. out there, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there in the same situation that you're. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it comes to the truck, what are we talking about price-wise? What year, make, model, what are you looking for? Probably late model. I mean, I've watched some of your other videos and so that they've been really helpful. But, you know, later model, maybe 2019, 2020. I'm trying to find a Volvo, a VNL 760. Mm -hmm. um, but I was also looking at the Freightliners as well. Um, those those two, basically. Got it. Good choice. Definitely great choice in trucks. Either the Volvo or the Cascadia, either one of them. Uh, I, I don't think you can go wrong with it. Mm -hmm. With the price of fuel here in Canada, you definitely want to take advantage of the more economical trucks. The truck that you're looking at, does it have a diesel or a battery pack APU unit? It doesn't have a, I don't know what you call it, like a third part. It's just the factory uh, heater. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it doesn't have a battery pack no, APU or no. a diesel. Not APU. this particular one that, okay. I've, that I was looking at. Got it. It scares me. Your position scares me because, because you're a brand new driver. Yeah. And you haven't done it before. like even if you told me that you have three months experience and even though I still think three months is, is not enough right. uh, to buy a truck. I think you have a lot of things working against you. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And it's a huge investment to buy a truck for $170,000 or so right. approximately for yeah. 2019. You might just be setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Finding a Canada only position is extremely hard with companies that have constant freight. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of fluctuations in freight and you might just not find that load going from Ontario to Manitoba or, you know, if they're sending you, I don't know, what are they planning on sending you? Like round trips to Ontario? Uh, it's more line haul stuff. So it's just going between their terminals. So okay. They always have stuff going and coming. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing, the roads. Having no experience, you, we're approaching winter. Mm -hmm. By the time you get that, let's say you let's say you purchase that truck tomorrow. Yeah. That truck is not going to be on the road for another three to four weeks. 
Right. Okay. You're approaching winter time. Um, I don't know if you saw one of the videos that uh, Fatai, one of our drivers, he did basically what the worst things in trucking is driving in Canada in the winter time. Right. It's a, it, it's a suicidal mission for somebody with no uh, with no experience. Right. The roads are extremely bad. The roads in the U.S. are ten times better than the roads in Canada. Right. And it's just not safe because mm -hmm. if you had the spring, summer and fall under your belt, then maybe I understand that you would get, you know, the winter. But if you're right. coming into this in the fall and in the winter time, I think that's very dangerous. Right. And if I am able to convince you not to do it, mm -hmm. I would like to convince you not to do it. I right. definitely would think that the better and safer option or route is to find a job where you're working with somebody, a driver trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to expedite the process, fine. You found a company that can do it, that will even hire you with no experience and will plate your truck. I get it. There's some companies out there that will do it. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be wiser or more of a safer, cautious route would be to work as a team, even for a month or two, and then go solo, even for a short period of time you know four or five months like right. really short i mean you, you see how fast time flies right yeah but if you were to at least take two three months to yourself to work with somebody or even one month just so they can teach you the ropes and then have you know four or five months under your belt as solo then you can say okay you know i'll make i know what i'm getting myself into i will make the purchase of one hundred seventy thousand dollars and work as an owner operator across canada right Spending a hundred, and I don't know what your financial situation is. Obviously, you'll probably get the approval. I'm sure you have a down payment for it. Right. I just think that you might just be setting yourself up for failure right off the get-go. Right. But um, there's a lot of good companies out there that will hire you into you know teams that do cross Canada, and you can start off there. At least get a feel for the roads. I mean, have you ever driven even in a car from Ontario to Manitoba? Oh yeah. You have. I've yeah. driven across Canada a few times. Okay. But you know. Yeah. No, but at least you get the sense that there is no two lanes. It's all one way, For like sure. one lane and there's, you know, an opposing lane coming at you. And, and then there's the icy road conditions and the roads not being cleaned as frequent as they do in the U.S. So there's a lot of uh, variables. Yeah. Yes. There's, that at least if you had, you know, one year, two years under your belt, uh, forget the two years, even if you had the one year, right. it would be a lot better. Uh, you'd be in a much better situation. Right. So I don't want to discourage you from buying a truck. Right. Uh, but I will try to convince you not to buy it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, even from a financial or you know money aspect, today you're looking at that truck at 170, 169, for example. Mm -hmm. A little bit about the truck, but I feel like if you were in this situation next year, you would probably pick it up for 150 or 140. Right. I do see already things going in the right direction. It just needs a little bit more time. Right. So I think you'll be saving 30,000 over there. Yeah. Um, I see that you, if you find a company to work for, you'll have the experience. Right. So there's a lot of things working for you if you wait. Right. If you were in a situation where you wanted to buy a truck, or you know, that's why I invited you here. I thought you were going to buy a truck and I would have offered you a couple of better options. What I don't like about the dealership that you want to buy the truck from mm -hmm. is that they, they are leasing trucks also. Right. Right. So that means that the truck that you're buying is off their lease lot. Yeah. And which means it was like a rental truck. Right. Now the rental trucks, I mean, I know how I drive rental cars. I don't know how you drive rental cars, right. but I know how I drive rental cars. And I don't think that, that would, that's the truck that, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely much better fleet owned trucks or other trucks, maybe an owner operator. That would probably be a much better route. And it's not like you're getting a smoking deal. Right. And especially that dealership. I know that dealership. I know what they do. I think that it might be better for you to hold off Okay. and wait for another truck. I just don't like the fact that they lease trucks. Right. right, I get that, yeah. If you are in the future in need of a truck and we have anything uh, off of our lot, then I would definitely offer you one of our trucks and they do you know, have a lot of warranty left on them. Or, right. Um, that's also an option. If after this, you still feel like you're going to purchase a truck for sure and there's nothing that I can do to convince you, then you're more than welcome to have a look at any one of my 2019s with the same kilometers and same mileage. Right. Uh, at least I would steer you in the direction to buy a proper truck because a truck with a battery pack APU unit, uh, there's engine hours, right? Yeah. So just like your car, just the trucks has engine hours, how many hours it's been working. A truck after three years of 2019, after three years working, would probably have about between five to 600, 650,000 kilometers on it. Right. And that unit probably has, I don't know, maybe 3,000 hours on it. But a truck with a battery pack APU or a diesel APU will have 2,000 hours on it. So right. the lifespan of that truck is going to be a lot more with a battery pack APU. For unit. sure. 
Okay. So at least I can, if I can not convince you not to do this, uh, then at least I'll be able to help you with your purchase right. okay, yeah. of a proper truck yeah. for you that will last you probably longer. When it comes to financing, who have you used or what do you have? I, I went to your link on your website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did that whole thing. Pretty easy uh, approval process as far as, you know, just uh, the questions and what you have the information you have to provide. Yeah. What kind of down payment did they require? Uh, 30. 30K or 30%? 30K. 30K. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of approval did they get you? Like a uh, interest rate? 8%. Eight? Okay. Yeah. For a first time buyer, that's actually really yeah. good. 8% five years nice no balloon payment of that yeah. yeah i mean that worked out uh really well so that's definitely i think for anyone who's watching i think that's uh, you're looking into this and, and financing i think that's a really good link to use and that kind of worked well for me so yep yeah. So the reason why I created this link was because I was sick and tired of finding owner operators that would come work for our company. And in order for me to play the truck, I would have to look at their lease agreement. I would collect a lot of the information and then I would submit it for plating. Right. And when I used to look at these finance agreements, I was blown away with these truck drivers paying 17%, 18%. And a lot of times the truck driver was homeowner, he has a stable job, makes good money and there's no reason why he has good credit there's no reason why he should be paying 17 18 percent yeah so we've been to to date i think we've had over 1700 forms i don't know how many of them got approved didn't get approved but i've been hearing that it's very beneficial for truck drivers which and i'm really happy to hear that you used it and you got the approval that's awesome yeah that's awesome that's great Amazing to hear. So first of all, I want to say a big thank you to our subscriber who was open to doing the interview on camera and letting me pick his brain. I'm sure and he felt that there are a lot of other drivers out there that are in the same situation that he's in. And well, you, you got my opinion on it, on what I feel is the right thing to do. I truly believe that in trucking, there is no cutting corners. You do need your experience. And I, may, I was very vocal about it. I told him what I thought and you guys all heard what I thought. I do not think that it's the right choice to go out there newly licensed drivers should not be getting into a truck or buying a truck you should definitely definitely have you know the two years under your belt you want to fast track it fine whatever 18 months you want to fast track that fine 12 months but it is a suicidal mission to go out there as a newly licensed driver to purchase a truck I'm not for it. I am very against it. I don't think that the roads will be safe with newly licensed drivers owning trucks out there. Again, I hear that there are a lot of mega carriers that are allowing newly licensed drivers to get into trucks. I'm so against it. I did not want to mention the name, both myself and the person that I was interviewing. I did not want to mention names of where he's getting, where he's putting that truck or where he wants to put that truck or which company was going to hire him. I just think that it's totally wrong. That's my take on it. I would love to hear what your take is on it.